Hey everyone, and welcome. Today we're tackling Leet Code Problem 898, Bitwise ORs of Subarrays. This problem is a really neat example of how a clever observation can turn a slow solution into a super fast one. Let's dive in. All right, so here's the official problem statement. The core task is this. We're given an array of integers. We need to find every possible non-empty contiguous subarray. For each of those subarrays, we calculate its bitwise OR. Finally, we count how many unique results we got. So let's simplify that. First, we find every continuous chunk of the array. Then, for each chunk, we combine all its numbers using the bitwise OR operation. After doing this for all chunks, we just count up the number of unique values we've produced. Just a quick refresher on what a bitwise OR is. It looks at the binary representation of two numbers. For each position, if either of the numbers has a 1, the result gets a 1 in that position. For example, 1 OR2, in binary, that's 0 1 OR10. The result is 1 1, which is the number 3. When the problem says bitwise OR of a subarray, it just means we apply this operation to all the numbers in that subarray. So for a subarray with 1, 2, and 4, we do 1 OR2 to get 3, and then 3 OR4 to get 7. Let's walk through the example from the problem description. The array is 1, 1, 2. The slide shows all the possible subarrays and their results. The subarray with just the first one gives us a result of 1. The one with just the second one also gives us 1. The subarray with just 2 gives us 2. Now for longer chunks. A subarray of 1 and 1. Well, 1 OR1 is still just 1. The subarray 1 and 2 gives us 3. And the whole array, 1 OR1 OR2, also results in 3. So if we collect all of these results, we get a bunch of 1s, a 2, and some 3s. The question asks for the number of distinct results. The unique values are just 1, 2, and 3. So our final answer is 3. The most direct way to solve this is with brute force. We could use two loops, an outer loop to pick a starting point, and an inner loop to pick an ending point. This would give us every possible subarray. For each one, we'd calculate its bitwise oporage and add the result to a set. Using a set automatically takes care of duplicates for us. But the constraints say the array can have up to 50,000 elements. An n-squared algorithm would be far too slow. We need a more clever approach. So let's find a smarter way. The trick is to build our solution step by step as we move through the array. Instead of starting from scratch for every subarray, we can ask a more focused question. At each element, what are the OR sums of all subarrays that end right here? Let's call this collection of results our frontier set. Let's see this frontier idea in action with the array 1, 2, 4. When we're at the first element, 1, the only subarray ending here is just 1, so our frontier set contains only the number 1. Now, we move to the next element, 2. One possible subarray is just 2, which gives us an OR sum of 2. The other possibility is to extend the previous subarrays. The only previous subarray ended at 1, so we extend it to 1, 2. The OR sum is 1 OR 2, which is 3. So our new frontier for subarrays ending at 2 is the set containing 2 and 3. Finally, we move to 4. We can start a new subarray 4, giving us 4. Or, we can extend the subarrays that ended at the previous spot. We take the previous frontier, 2, 3, and OR each of its elements with 4. 2, OR4 is 6. 3, OR4 is 7. So our final frontier is 4, 6, and 7. Here is the crucial aha moment, that frontier set we're tracking. It never gets big. Why? Think about what happens when you OR an existing result with a new number. The new value will either be exactly the same, or it will be larger. It gets larger because you're flipping some 0 bits to 1 bits. You can never go backwards and flip a 1 bit back to a 0. Since the numbers we're working with have a fixed number of bits, let's say 32, there are only so many bits you can flip to 1. This means that as you extend a subarray, you can only create about 32 new distinct values before you run out of bits to flip. This keeps our frontier set incredibly small. So here's the full algorithm based on that idea. We'll use two sets. ANS is our master set that collects every unique result we ever find. Kerr is our frontier set, which holds the OLR results for subarrays ending at the previous position. We loop through the input array, one number at a time. Let's call the current number X pris. Inside the loop, we create a new, temporary frontier called Kerr2. First, we add X itself to it. Then, for every value Y in our old frontier Kerr, we calculate Y ORX and add that to Kerr2. 
Once that's done, we found all the OR sums for subarrays ending at X press. We add all of them to our master and set. Finally, we update our frontier by setting cur equal to cur2, and we move on to the next number. All right, here's the Python code that implements our frontier set algorithm. It's surprisingly short and elegant once you understand the core idea. Let's quickly walk through it. First, we initialize our two sets. ANS will store the final unique results, and cur is our dynamic frontier set, which starts empty. We then loop through each element x in the input array. Inside this loop, we'll calculate the new frontier and update our ANS set. After the loop is done, we just return the size of the ANS set. This single line is the heart of the solution. Let's break it down. We're reassigning the cur set. The right side is made of two parts joined by a set union operator. The first part, axe x, creates a set containing just our current number. This represents the new subarray that starts and ends at x spritz. The second part is a set comprehension. It says, for every value y that was in our old frontier, calculate y o r x and put it in a new set. The pipe operator then combines these two sets into one, which becomes our new frontier. After that, we just update our main and set with all these new values. So how efficient is this solution? The time complexity is big O of n times log w phi's. Here, n is the length of our input array. w is the maximum possible value an element can be. The log w part comes from our key insight. The frontier set cur can have at most about 32 elements. So for each of the n elements, we're only doing a small, constant amount of work. The space complexity is also big O of n log w's. While our cur set is always small, our final ANS set could, in a worst-case scenario, accumulate a large number of unique values. So let's wrap up with the main points. First, always consider the brute force approach, but immediately check the constraints to see if an n-squared solution is viable. Here, it wasn't. The big win came from a dynamic programming mindset, reusing past results to build new ones. Our frontier set was the key to this. And finally, Sometimes the most powerful insights come from deeply understanding the properties of the operations you're working with. Knowing that bitwise OR is monotonic, it only ever adds bits, was the secret that made this entire approach work. I hope that breakdown was helpful and made sense. If you found this useful, a like or a subscribe would be amazing. If you have any questions or a different way of thinking about it, drop a comment below. And hey, if you're feeling extra generous, you can always support the channel through the Boba Fund. Thanks for watching, keep up the great work, and I'll see you in the next one.